My art uh, mostly is uh, realistic, uh, but there is the 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 art the art that you see in museums on the street or other galleries uh, affect you. And I see a lot of abstract coming up lately. And you can see in my work that there is a little abstractness in it. Little by little, I'm accepting abstract, but still, it has to be something to show, to show your creation, not just because it's a new way of throwing painting on a canvas, but it has to have your, your style, of the way of thinking in it, your soul has to be in that, in that piece of art. Real art is a creation. Art is creation, actually. It's something that it never has been done. Um, you, can, you can copy photographs or pieces of art, but that's not real art. Art is to come up with something new, different, some, some change. You can copy something, but you have to change it to your, to your style or ways uh, to make the difference, to show, to show your art through the new piece of work. It's, a, it's creation. The education I started with my mother's uh, learning a little bit from watching my mother. Because my mother, when, after my father died, she needed to do something. And she went and, and raised her in a, a school for, no, no painting, but it's a mechanical drawing. Um, but she realized that just that wasn't sure what she wanted. And then soon after that, she uh, enrolled in, a, in a, what was called the Academy. The Academy was run by a, a man that came to El Salvador from Spain. Uh, he was a painter, a fairly good one. Uh, he decided to teach, charging very little. Uh, so the, the students came, uh, spent the mornings with, in his studio. Uh, so I learned from my mother because she, she took me to the studio and also went in trips and, and she painted outdoors, uh, rivers, houses, farming, stuff like that. So by watching her, I learned a lot. And uh, she had the capability of, that I haven't been able to accomplish is that she painted what is called wet on wet in oils which is very hard because hoyos don't dry very quickly and very easy you make a big mess. You mix the color from your brush with the colors already painted on. Yeah. Later on, when I came to the United States, uh, I went to school and trying to do architecture because architecture has a lot of art in it. But uh, I wasn't too good in, in the English and I couldn't understand the teacher and I, and I didn't even catch what was the homeworks that he explained to us to bring for the next class or something. So I didn't do very good in that, but I decided to if I can, if I can get good grace in art, I can even have the grace. But I enjoy art so much, I stay in art until I, I finish the two years of college at the, at the San Francisco 
City College. And after that, I, I, because I had the AA from that, I went and applied at the San Francisco State University, with which I was accepted, and I took courses in that. Also, I went to other little colleges in the neighborhood, like San Bruno, because I heard about teachers that were good at doing some things. For instance, there was a teacher called Jim Promessi in the uh, Skyline College in San Bruno. I went and took two semesters with him in doing portraits. He was an excellent teacher in portraits. Um, and when I came to, to Oceanside, I went to the City College here, took took a class and and I did pretty good I say I will say and the teacher was amazed that uh, I did the, the drawings in oils which uh, n not too many people will do that because it's kind of messy and you have to be very careful uh, my my first class in in oil was in San Francisco, in the San Francisco University. That's a, that's a Jesuit university, and I, 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 it was at night, on Wednesday night, from, nine, from 7 to 10, and I, I did pretty good on that. I went back to the city college to finish the two-year college and that was it. Then uh, I came to the United States, got married, and I had to make a living. So I went to <laughs> find works um, in restaurants and, and hotels. And eventually I found uh, uh, a job at the Bank of America where I'm still working at, at the at the City College in San Francisco. Looking at uh, things like uh, photographs and, and in nature you see um, pieces of uh, wood and you you get the inspiration of working with a piece of wood. Um, one day work, walking on the beach, I found a piece of driftwood. It look, the piece of driftwood looked like a, like, like a Lego lamp. And I took it home, and after looking it and looking it, I saw inside a piece of wood the form of uh, the leg of a ballerina and the torso. And I carved it and I have it and I mounted it on a shell. Uh, I still have that piece and it's, it's what you see, you see into the, into the materials. That's what inspired you. I know in another, area I, I, I found a piece of wood, a piece of redwood burl, and looking at it, I saw that there is this fish in it, but all I had to do is carve around the, the wood and discard what it, what it wasn't working, and I have a beautiful uh, carving of a uh, Salmon jumping from uh, from the water. Uh, it's what you you see in your in your eye. You see the the in your mind. You see the the finished product before in front of you from a piece of a regular piece of wood. It's 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 inside of you. It's, um, nobody's telling you 
to do it. Now I was telling you, do this. It's what you see in the piece of wood, what is inside. And you carve the, the, the wood and take what is not, no value, just keep, you, you get the, the form and shape of the piece you want. That is creating something from your mind. Uh, the biggest influence or the biggest uh, is Picasso. Picasso, it was a prodigy of art. He produced thousands and thousands of pieces. From since he was a child until his untimely death, he, he explored so many techniques, so many medias, and one of the pieces that is affects me a lot is Guernica. Guernica has all the drawing and you see the feeling of what he tries to convey to other artists that appreciate a piece of wood. Well, the thing about the connection is, is expression. You, you express yourself, uh, like poets express themselves with words, but you express, your, as an artist, you express yourself with your art pieces uh, and show the, the people, uh, the world, your friends, that you are producing something of value, artistic value. Um, that is the connection. Is to be able to to form something of art that has art value and is con is considered by other artists that is worth of keeping. I, I have one, one thought about this is, an artist, people says, I am an artist themselves, but I, I will say, don't call yourself an artist. It has to be another artist that tells you you are an artist. Yes. Something that has triggered my, my mind about creating something uh, from a photograph or from another piece of art, I, I modify it my way and I make a drawing first and change it my way or even copying some, some photograph I change it enough not to be exactly like like the photograph itself, but putting on my 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 uh, style, my uh, my how you call it, my methodology. Um, my thinking on it, my new, my new movement that I'm putting in that, uh, my creation has to be included in a new piece of art. It has to be modified to the way I want it. Probably that salmon jumping off the water. It's a sculpture in, in Redwood Burrow. Because I, I saw it inside a piece of wood and burrow uh, that is like the fish itself is trying to tell me, get me out of here, release me. And so I did that and I. 
even without feeling a fish or anything, I, 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 I think I gave it life. Uh, still got a piece. I don't think I will ever part from it. When somebody that has art knowledge and comes and asks you, would you sell me the, the painting? Uh, I like that painting very much. I would like to, to keep it for myself. That is the proudest moment that you have. The darkest moment. <laughs> one day, I found one of my pieces of art in a flea market. That was a dark moment. Somehow, the person that received that piece of art threw it away or gave it to somebody to be sold as, as for almost nothing. Fortunately, the person that bought it uh, the, from the free market saw the value of it, saw the signature and contacted me, and we are now friends, and he valued the painting very much. Uh, it's not so much the future. What you want is that the people that have your artwork appreciate the effort that you have put in. And to save them, to save the art for their, as, an, as a memento of, uh, for their inheritance to their children. And uh, I, I, I also make sure that when I give something to someone or sell something to someone, that the work is appreciated enough that they will do that, that they will keep it. Um, in San Francisco, there are laws that you cannot change or destroy any piece of artwork because art is the soul of the artist. And it should never, if you don't, don't want to keep it, you have to sell it back to the artist. When I pass away, I want the, 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 the artwork to go to people that really want it. Um, if not, if there is not enough people who want it, I want it to be donated to to a museum so they can um, auction it and make money for the museum or, or gallery. But it's, what you want is, is the work to go to somebody that really likes your work. No, because it's a, it's a relative of yours. The community, we are in a community that is not very artistic. Larger communities like the San Francisco area and Los Angeles area has a very feeling for art. You can see when you travel in San Francisco murals murals done by by people that are not not real professionals but they they put their feelings on the walls of buildings and that is creation and that affects you and the, the, their feelings comes through what you see in their art Usually I go to museums and galleries everywhere I go and, I, and that the impressions I get from those places make me 
activating me some wish to paint, uh, no copy in the style, but it triggers uh, a sensation of work on a style of different, getting some ideas from what I see in these places. Success is when other artists look at your work and they see your potential in it and your accomplishment. And even they like to get your, your, your work. Uh, they offer you exchange of works or pieces for, so they can obtain one of your works. Uh, I have several pieces like that that I have exchanged to other artists. That is the way, it's the appreciation that a person that knows art likes your work and that is a very feel, a good feeling uh, for yourself. When I was studying in the San Francisco University, this only was one semester, and the teacher uh, told us to, to paint this, this cow skull that he, she has put as a, a model on a table. At the end of every class, even though I had finished the painting, she came and with a big rug full of turpentine, wiped it out. And I asked for, why do you do that? And she says, because next time you gotta do it better. So she kept doing that the whole semester. And except in the last, the last class, she left and the, the painting was beautiful. Uh, the, the advice, for me is do it again until you are happy with it, until you cannot do it any, any better. You can, you can continue working and working and until you accomplish and you feel that is, that's your best work. Never give up. Um, there is there is a lot of uh, aspiring artists, especially on the older population. After people retire, they want to do art because it's it's a it's a good thing to express themselves, to do to do something of value, to put your mind in a, in a place in heaven, you can say, because you are there with your art, you, your work. Um, the, um, I will advise these people, anybody, to go and do their art, and don't give, never give up even though your drawing might not be good the first time, but you have to continually doing it until you will get it right, and you will.